Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you one method of how to cut out a subject from a green screen. Um, I've included a link to this green screen JPEG that I'm going to be using so you can follow along if you'd like. So I'm just going to go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. I'm using Adobe Photoshop CS4. It should work pretty much the same in CS3 and CS2. I'm not too sure about older than that. So obviously the better the lighting is, the better it's going to come out. Um, so if that's at all possible, do the best you can at that. It's really going to help you out. Now I know what you're thinking, oh, I'll just use the magic wand tool. No, don't do that. What you actually want to use is the background eraser tool. So how you get to this is you click and hold on the eraser tool, and it's the second one down, it's background eraser tool. Now you'll see you get a circle with the crosshairs in the middle. So how this tool works is it makes a sample of the color you select. It will only erase that color, so it works particularly well with a green screen. Any other color should work as long as there's a contrast between the background and the subject. So what you'll want to do is select an area where the crosshairs are on the green, but the circle is overlapping the subject a bit. So you want to make sure that your brush size is big enough to be able to do this. You'll also want to keep in mind that you can adjust the tolerance. Uh, you're just going to have to play around with that a little bit. Um, I'd suggest anywhere between 30 and 40 seems to work out pretty well. Now it works best if you only use this around areas with a lot of detail like hair, which can be particularly difficult to key out. So you can just go ahead and click and drag, and you'll want to keep clicking and sampling new areas as you go around the hair. Now as you can see this does a pretty good job, but in reality it's not quite getting all of the green. It's hard to see, but there's still a little shade of green in this transparent area here. So to be able to see that, create a new layer underneath, and you'll want to fill it with some kind of a gray. So you can clearly see that there's a lot of green still around here. To fix that, just use the same method, go around it again, um, make sure you're on your main layer. So you can just go around it, uh, clicking in the lighter shade of green. And you'll want to change the background color a few times as it can help you see a little bit better preferably with a color that doesn't have a green tone to it and you can do this a couple times until you're pretty happy with it um, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect yet uh, we can get to fixing that later so now that you've got that set up what you're going to do is select your paint bucket tool. If it's not directly on your menu bar, it could be hidden behind the gradient tool. Now, what we're going to be doing a little bit differently with the paint bucket tool, as you probably normally would, is you're going to switch the mode to clear. Now, what this does is instead of painting your selection a specific color, it actually deletes it. And again, you have a tolerance setting. Around 45, 46 is usually pretty good. And then just click in your green area and you'll see that it cleans it up pretty good. Now you can clearly see that it, it almost looks like a stain around the head. And you'll also want to go in, uh, zoom in a bit. You'll see a lot of edges still have some green around. You can go ahead and use the paint bucket tool on that as well. Um, again, you might have to adjust your tolerance a bit. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of the stain. How you're going to do that is right click on the layer icon and click select pixels. Um, in some versions it could be select transparency rather than select pixels. Once your subject is selected, click the add mask layer. Now this is going to create a mask of the subject. Now to see the mask, 
hold alt and click on the mask icon. So now that you can see your mask, you can see this stain looking thing pretty easily. To get rid of that, all we need to do is select your paintbrush, make sure your foreground color is set to black, give yourself a, a pretty decent sized brush, and change your mode to overlay and your opacity to 100%. Now when you paint on any gray areas with the black brush, it changes it completely to black. So just get rid of any gray areas. So now if you click off your mask, you can see that the stain is completely gone. At this point, you want to make it so that there's only black and white. You don't want any gray in the mask. Now in this case, it uh, looks pretty good if you do have any gray, if it's on the white, just switch your paintbrush to white and change your mode back to normal and just paint over it. And if there's gray on the black area, just use the black brush. So once you're happy with your mask, you can click back and you'll see that there's still some green in the hair and on the watch and a little bit on the shirt it's actually quite easy to clean this up. That's why I prefer this method over a lot of others um, because it's so easy to fix this. All you have to do is again right click on your layer, select pixels, create a new layer on top, switch the blending mode to hue. Now what this does is when you paint on top of it it only changes the color. It's not going to draw any lines or anything like that. So then use your dropper and get a good selection of the hair that you think represents the color that you're trying to fill in. Then go to your brush. Again, make sure you have a fairly good sized brush with some feathering. Just go ahead and paint over the green area. You'll see that it cleans it up pretty nice. Now again, same method, uh, if there's any green on the skin, anything like that, just make a selection there, and paint over it. It's also worth noting that if you use black, it basically desaturates whatever you paint. So you have to be pretty careful. Uh, you don't want to bleed that desaturation into the skin. Okay, so once you're happy with the color, uh, you can deselect with Command D or Control D on Windows. And it's not perfect, but uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, I'm just going to keep it quick. Play around with it as much as you want. Uh, do as much detail as you want. And that's basically it. Uh, you know, just play around, have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave me any comments. If you have any questions about the tutorial, I'm happy to answer. And if you have any ideas for future tutorials, uh, Send me a message or leave me a comment. Thanks for watching.